Alana and Pumpkin are out here slamming their mother, Mama June, and I think for good reason. So in this last episode of Mama June, June, Pumpkin, Alana, and Jessica, they all decided to sit down together and talk about who is going to pay for Alana's college tuition. So Alana got into one of the best nursing colleges in the United States, but of course that comes at a cost, and her tuition cost over $40,000 a year, and they told her she's going to have to come up with $11,000 just before she can even start class, and they thought that June would jump at the opportunity to help her daughter out, especially after everything she's put Alana through in the past with using drugs and picking men over her. Pumpkin and Alana were relying heavily on June to come through and help out somehow, some way with Alana's college tuition. But when they asked her about it, she pretty much said she ain't got it. She said she just had to move so she can be closer to Anna since she's sick. And she said that's cost a lot of money and she's got to replace her tooth and that's $32,000. And she pretty much said that she didn't have anything to put towards her college whatsoever. And Pumpkin was like, well, what happened to the Coogan account? And a Coogan account is the account where if a child is under the age of 18, then the parent in certain states has to set aside a certain percentage and save for the child once they are of age. Mama June didn't really sound like she wanted to talk about the Coogan account too much. She said, well, you know, we did Dancing with the Stars, and then we did Mass Singer, and that was just last season, wasn't it, that they did all that? And she's like, so they told me I could keep 80% for myself to spend on what I see fit and put 20 aside for Alana. And June claims she did the opposite of that. She claims that she took 20% and set aside 80% for Alana. And if that's the case, then I think that's a lot of money and that needs to be given to her. But also, th there's been a lot more money, I feel like, that has been made that should be in the Coogan account on top of just those two events. Like all the interviews, all the years of them being on reality TV and the appearances. I feel like Mom and June is trying to brush this under the rug as much as possible because I feel like up until this past year or two that she's probably spent majority of the money that she had set aside for Alana while she was on drugs and with Gino. June has no problem buying Justin new teeth. And I'm sure if she lost one tooth and that's $32,000, I can't even imagine how much he spent on Justin's teeth. And then he's got all these chains, multiple chains hanging from his neck, just what we see on a daily basis. And that's not including everything that's probably in the safe. And she has spent money left and right on Justin. We can't forget the guy that she dated briefly before Justin, that dude that ended up running back to his ex like a week later that she bought the place for and then furnished it and then even bought him a whole car but you can't help out your daughter with her college fund i that just pisses me off because when they looked into her finances when they had to figure out what was the appropriate amount for her to pay in child support they discovered that june makes over two hundred and eighty eight thousand a year over a quarter million dollars and over twenty four thousand dollars a month yeah, she said it's not like that every single month. It goes up and down because she's not filming all year round. It just depends how much she makes off social media and that can fluctuate and how many appearances she has. But she's still making a pretty pet. I'm curious for all my people in the comments who have been to college or who are currently in college, did your guys' parents help out with your college tuition? My parents were never in a position to help out, but I looked it up and 85% of parents pay at least a portion of their child's tuition. I'm sure most of those people don't even make half of what June makes a year. And if they can make it happen, then I feel like June should be able to make something happen. So they all left. June went back home and Pumpkin went back home with Josh and the kids. And while Pumpkin was at home, she got a call from June. And June was just like, you know, I'm not helping out. I don't got it. And Pumpkin was like, you know, we need to figure out these Coogan accounts. And she's like, we really have to come up with something so Lana can start college. Don't you want to invest in her future? And June was like, 
well, if the lawn is not going to invest in her own future, then why should I? And then she had the nerve to ask Pumpkin, well, what are you and Josh going to do? It's not their responsibility. It is not their obligation. They have already had to do more than enough for Alana that they did not need to because they were not willing to turn their backs and abandon Alana like June did. It's just so shameful. Like, do anything. Give her anything. Just something to at least show that she matters to you. It just feels like after all the crap that June has put her through, paying part of her college fund is the least she can do, I feel like, in my opinion. Like, hell, even if it's just first semester and you got to be like, hey, I'll pay for the first semester. Or I'll pay this 11 k to get you started. But after that, you got to figure it out from here. I just don't get how she can be so selfish when it comes to her child, but she can just spend money like it's nothing on all these random men. So then Pumpkin decided to grab Draylon so they could get to the bottom of if Draylon's going to be able to move out of state with Alana or not because she's three weeks away from going to college and Draylon still doesn't have his affairs in order. Pumpkin ended up finding a lawyer willing to do a little consultation and get to the bottom of things for Draylon. So they sat down, they did a little video chat with the lawyer, and he said, well, I don't believe it'll be a problem you moving out of state as long as you're back before your court date. But the lawyer said to be safe, Draylon needed to contact the district attorney's office and see what his bond conditions are. So he got off the video chat with the lawyer. He called up the district attorney and he was thrilled when he got the news that he is allowed to move out of state with Alana. He just has to let them know exactly where he's going and like I said, come back before. Draylon was ecstatic and he broke the news to his girl Alana that yes I can move to Colorado with you. She was excited and Pumpkin decided to plan a special trip to Colorado for a few days and she's going to take Josh, Alana, and Draylon so Draylon can try to find a job while they're up there and so Alana and Draylon can go looking at different houses in person and so they can also tour the college campus. So they packed their bags and luckily Jessica and her girlfriend were willing to watch the baby. And Jessica and her girl are going to have their hands full with all those kids. Especially there's like what three kids under three. Oh God bless them. But I've heard from people in the past who were on WeTV shows that whenever they had to do things where they needed childcare, that the show was willing to pay for that childcare. So I'm sure that's probably the case with their show as well. And if that is, that's nice that they don't have to worry about paying for childcare because with all those kids, if you don't have a family member, that can add up quick. The family packs all their bags, they go to Atlanta to go to the airport, they hop on a plane and they fly out to Denver, Colorado and they go to this Airbnb, they unpack their bags and Pumpkin wants to get right to it. She wants to go look at different houses and apartments that Lana and Draylon can look at and Josh was like, look, I'm tired, I'm jet lagged, I just want to take a nap, you know, I." Very rarely get to have a nap because I'm always with the kid. I feel your pain there, Josh. I miss having a nap every now and then. I have not had a nap in over three years now, it seems like. But Josh is like, okay, I'm going to sit back and get some rest. And Draymond was trying to sit back and sleep too. But Pumpkin's like, no, this is not going to fly. If you're going to be sharing this spot with Alana, then you need to have some input and the decision making and look at the place too. So Draylon, Alana, Pumpkin, they went and looked at a few different places. The first place was okay. The second place looked nice and they seemed interested in and it was $2,200 a month and it was a two bedroom but it was fully furnished. 
it seemed like a nice little place, especially a starter place for your first place once you finally move out, especially with your first place with your boyfriend. And I think having a furnished place would be ideal because they already have so many other things they have to stress out about, like moving in three weeks and starting college and Draylon finding a job. Having to get furniture and figure out how to move it to this place on top of that, that's just going to make things even more stressful and complicated so they end up applying for these places they go back to the Airbnb pumpkin wanted to go see Awana's college campus and Draylon was exhausted and he wanted to stay behind and pumpkins like okay you can stay behind on this one but Josh is gonna stay with you and you need to make sure Josh that he's filling out job applications. So they leave to see the campus. It was a nice, beautiful campus. And while they're doing all that, Josh and Draylon are just behind playing video games. And then towards the end, Josh was like, oh yeah, how many job applications have you filled out? And Draylon was like, uh, like two. Which was probably none because if you filled out just two job applications, then you shouldn't have to think so hard about how many job applications you have filled out. It just feels like he was just trying to tell Josh anything to get him to shut up when Josh knew damn well he has not seen this man fill out a single job application. Up until now, has Draylon worked a job? I don't remember them speaking on Draylon ever working, but I may have missed it or forgot about it. I don't know, but hopefully he's able to take this seriously and quickly get a job once they do move so he can help out because Alana said, look, I ain't like mom. I ain't about to take care of no man. It's going to be 50-50 or if he wants to pay more, he can, but it's not going to be anything less. So then Pumpkin and Alana were back at the campus and they decided to go try out this coffee shop. And while they're at the coffee shop, Alana suddenly got a call from one of the places they just checked out and they said that they turned down her application because she doesn't have any credit. And I was just like, what? I guess if she was trying to buy a house, I don't know, I've never tried to rent a house before. I've been able to rent apartments with no credit, but I guess trying to buy a house if you have no credit, that could be difficult. But they turned her down and she's now back to square one, figuring out where she's gonna live. Hopefully that other option is still an option and they call her soon or she figures something else out. But it's crunch time. The time is coming and it's time to figure things out. And in a couple of weeks, that is not much time at all. Like most places, like if you sign up, you're not gonna be moving in next week. Normally you're gonna be moving in at least a month two or more before then because they have to get the unit ready and all that so i mean she might have to stay at airbnb or do something for a minute before she can find a place but hopefully she's able to get that all figured out and hopefully june has a change of heart and she's willing to help her daughter out next week it looks like the family is going to sit with, down with june and try to give it one last shot you know and i remember alana pumpkin josh and draylon they all did a meet and greet like a little over a year ago. And I remember Alana, she actually spoke about how much was owed to her. She said just off her cut alone, she made $8,500. And we knew that amount because she ended up calling out Boston Market, the place that hosted the meet and greet, because apparently at the time, they had allegedly screwed her over and did not give her a single dime of the money she earned from that meet and greet. And they're charging $25 a pop, and she made almost nine racks just for Alana herself. So if you're struggling that bad June and it's going to stress you out that much to help pay for some of your daughter's college fund, just host a meet and greet or something and be like, okay, all the proceeds are going to go towards Alana's college tuition and all that would take is just a day you got to sacrifice doing meet and greets. I mean, anything. June has to remember that the only reason she's where she is today is thanks to her daughter, Honey Boo Boo, because if it wasn't for Honey Boo Boo, she would still be that same mama that was living off welfare, coupon clipping, struggling, making that 
ketchup, spaghetti, nasty crap they used to make. And the, the only reason that she got where she is is because of Honey Boo Boo. That's why we watch Whisper Olana and her personality. Before Mama June, it was Honey Boo Boo. And I feel like she really needs to contribute a lot to a lot of her success and where she is today. And I feel like the least you can do is break some bread. Help out your daughter and make her feel like you actually want her to succeed in life. Sorry, I didn't mean to make this video so long, but I definitely just felt some type of way about this last episode. And I'm looking forward to next week's episode and to see what she has to say. But that is it for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think about everything in the comments below. Check out my lashes and cosmetics at CourtneyAmber.com. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.